Hello! Today we're going to do a very quick video to, to compare the human eye and the camera. And so that's our basic goal, just to compare and contrast the human eye with the camera. Okay, so we'll start with this incredible drawing from uh, Wikipedia. And so, what do you think this is? Is this a human eye or is this a camera? Well, it's clearly the human eye, so it's a complicated thing. Right, there's some basics. The optical parts are pretty basic. You've got the cornea, the lens, and then you've got um, the retina, and the retina is where the where you really want the focused image to appear. And you know, at first glance, the camera looks quite a bit different, but in terms of their optical properties, there are certainly some similarities. Okay, so let's let's talk about those. So what similarities can you think of between the human eye and the camera? Okay, so here's one that I came up with. In fact, I came up with three. So both of them use a lens to focus the light and create a real inverted image. And that's something interesting all by itself, right? That when you look out and you look at, say, a tree, okay, the image of that tree on your retina is actually upside down. And then the brain works with that, and the, so the brain system, um, visual system, turns that image right side up so you see a right side up tree. But on your retina, it, it's upside down. Similar thing works with the camera. So the lens of the camera also creates a real inverted image on the film or on the what's called the charge coupled device, which is sort of like an electronic retina. Okay, in addition to that, both of these devices, the human eye and the camera, have a diaphragm that controls the amount of light entering the lens. And this is the shutter in the camera and the pupil and iris system in the human eye. And finally, you need a method of sensing the image. And so it's you have a retina in your eye, in each one of your eyes. And you use film on a camera, at least in the olden days you use film. These days, if you have a digital camera, camera then you effectively have an electronic retina known as a charge-coupled device. Okay, so once again, here is that nice picture of the human eye taken from Wikipedia. And one neat thing is, we think about the lens doing the focusing, and the lens is where the focusing happens in the camera. But where most of the refraction actually takes place is where the light changes, uh, where the index of refraction of the medium of, uh, that the light is in changes most uh, drastically. And that, in fact, is where the light simply goes from air uh, and through the cornea. Okay, so that's the largest change in index of refraction. And so you get some, uh, some focusing taking place there, some bending of the light. And then the lens's role is actually just to sharpen that image. So with the ciliary, ciliary muscle, you can adjust the shape of the lens and you can do that fine focusing, so you get a nice focused image on the retina. Right, so lens is certainly a critical piece. And one of the really amazing features is just how quickly this uh, adjustment happens. Okay, so if you look at something close up, for instance, maybe you're looking at your computer screen right now, and then you look at the window, and you look at, a, say, you know, a, a, a house across the street or something, you almost don't even have to think about the fact that your eye is actually changing the shape of the lens as you do this. So you can have a sharply focused image when you look at the screen and then also a sharply focused image of that house across the street when you look out the window. Okay. And fortunately for us, that, that uh, process does take a very short amount of time. And this process, by the way, is known as accommodation. Okay, so this is our final screen today, actually. So we've seen this equation before. 
we applied it to mirrors as well as to lenses. So with the human eye and the camera, we're thinking about how it applies to lenses. And basically, this is sort of addressing that accommodation idea, right? So if you have a particular object distance, then that uh, changes the image distance. And so you got to change, uh, you got to play with the F, or you play with the F and you change the image distance, one of the two, okay? But if you change the object distance, then that affects the values of the other variables in the equation. Okay, so we got to account for these changes in the equation in both the human eye and the camera. Okay, so let's go back to the camera lens. And so the camera. So the camera lens has a fixed focal length, basically, in a, in a fairly inexpensive camera. You get a really expensive camera with a fancy lens on it, and you can actually change the focal length, but we won't worry about that right now. So, what happens here is that in the camera, the focal length is fixed. So when you change the object distance, okay, then that gives you a different image distance. However, you want the image to show up sharply focused on the um, basically the electronic retina or on the film. And so what you have to do is you have to move the lens so that the distance between the lens and your charge couple device, your electronic retina, is the right value, the image distance. Okay, so that's how you do the focusing in the camera. You get a fixed focal length lens, basically. When you change the object distance, you get a new image distance. That requires you to move the lens so that lens is the correct distance away from the film or the electronic retina. The human eye doesn't work like that. So the human eye is a bit different. In the human eye, you're stuck with that image distance. Okay, so you basically have the lens of your eye and then the back of your eye where the retina is. That's the image distance, and that's a fixed quantity. So when the object distance changes, what you have to do to keep the image distance the same is to make a change in the focal length. And so this is how it's done in the eye. You adjust with the you just adjust the shape of the lens using the ciliary muscle to um, to make sure that sharp image shows up where it's supposed to, which is right at the back of the eye on the retina. Okay, so a lot of similarities between the human eye and the camera, but how the focusing is done is actually different. In both cases, one thing is fixed, and then a change the object distance requires a change in the other, the third parameter in the equation. But in the camera lens, it's the, it's the focal length that's a fixed quantity. In the human eye, it's the image distance that's the fixed quantity. Okay, so that's one of the major differences between them. Okay, so that is all for today for our introduction to uh, the human eye and the camera. Just a quick look at how they compare to each other.